Okay, everybody, let's go ahead and start with the Empire this time around, and I'm going to try something different. Let's start with the leadership, okay? So, for the leadership, we have a Warrior Priest here, going to be on a steed, going to have Shield of Faith and Soul Fire with Scroll of Power and the Hammer of Sigmar. We're also going to have a Jade Wizard here with Regrowth and Earth Blood, unless I saw it wrong. Yeah, Regrowth, Earth Blood, and the Power Stone. And then up in the air, we are going to be seeing Karl Franz himself. On top of his lovely Griffin Deathclaw. We have Gal Maraz, Reikland Runefang, Stand Your Ground, Foe Seeker, as well as Hold the Line and Blood Roar. So he's going to be decked out completely. Now, for the rest of this army, we are going to have a nice mixture of things. So we're going to have two spearmen, a uh, Flagellant, Sigmar Sons, who are also unbreakable ROR swordsmen. We got the Great Swords in the center for a little bit of infantry power. We are going to have two Knights of the Blazing Sun with that Warrior Priest. And on the left flank, we're going to have the Empire Knights. Two of them, one of them going to be hidden. Um, now, up front, we are going to have some Outriders with Grenade Launchers. Damn it, Soothsayer, you sexy, sexy man. Bring in one of my favorite units in the game. And if Apache's paying attention, I know he must be, you know, super, super excited. Maybe a little aroused at the fact that Shetland, I mean, uh, that Soothsayer is bringing some Grenade Launchers. Because I know he loves them, too. Now, going over to the Beastman army being brought by Fly on the Bread. Starting with that leadership, we're going to have a Bray Shaman on top of a Chariot. The Bray Shaman will be of Beast. Going to have the Transformation of Kadan, Flock of Doom, Wild Heart, and the Jagged Dagger to get that extra Winds of Magic. Now, for the last leader, we're going to have Morgor the Shadow Gave. He's going to have Call the Violence, as well as one of his summons, the Spirit Essence of Chaos, and his Regeneration, of course. Now, aside from that, we're going to have two Razor Gore Herd. We're going to have some Butchers of Kalkengard and then some more Minotaurs with Shields. We're going to have units of Ungor Spearmen. We are then going to have an ample supply of Gore Herd with Shields. Vanguard deployed in front. We're going to have five of them to be precise. We're going to have some uh, more Ungor Spear. I didn't know Ungor Spearmen got Vanguard. Damn, that's new. So, got two Ungor Spearmen. We're going to have some Centigors with Chaos Warriors with I mean, Chaos Warhounds with Poison on the far right flank, and that's going to round it out. So both of these players are uh, going to be having rather large armies with a, quite a good mixture of units in them. So we will see how this all breaks down. But, uh, you know, looking at the deployment, the Beast's been going for a very hard right um, flank, and we will see if they're able to envelop the Empire here or not. No range for Sooth besides the grenade launchers, but look at that. One volley already took off about a fifth of health from these gore herd, and now we have Carl Franz diving in here saying, Hey boys, wanna play? Because there's some explosions, and oh my god, terror kicking in. And look at that, two volleys and a charge from Carl, and now a charge from the Knights of the Blazing Sun. And we're going to see Soothsayer immediately get a nice little pick off there. Taking him down to about half health. They'll come back, but when they do, they will be a bit worse for wear. And now we have these Gore Herd diving in. Empire Knights and Great Swords diving in on top of them. And they are going to dish out so much damage. And I really like what I'm seeing here. We're going to see as the Beastmen are pushing up from this side, we're going to see Soothsayer pulling back, refusing that flank. Looking like he's just going to pull back and try to defend as he then pushes himself around the right flank here and continues to pick off more and more beastman units already two gore herd basically off the field and um, a lot of damage being dished out carl franz is still up in the air looks like he's going to be diving down into this blob fight here with the minotaurs with shields as well as the razor gore herd a nice flock of doom coming down and in comes some beastman reinforcements with morgor the shadow gave some razor gore herd and everybody coming in for a fight but look at this, the Empire now continuing to push around this right flank, and now Knights of the Blazing Sun getting a rear charge on top of this Beastman pocket, and Soothsayer is doing some nasty, nasty work to the Beastman. Terror is going to kick in on top of the Minotaurs and the Razor Gore Herd, it looks like. Uh, not the Minotaurs yet, doing so much damage, but look, now Carl Franz is on top of Morgor the Shadow Gave, dishing out so much work. Desperately, the um, Beastmen are coming around this flank, um, peeling off some of their spearmen here. I like this micro, but they need to get in here quickly. Otherwise, it's going to be too little too late. And we now have Centigors diving into Knights of the Blazing Sun. Knights of the Blaze... I mean, sorry, the Empire Knights not going to get a counter charge. So they're not doing well in this combat right now, but their heavy armor will be able to take quite a lot of punishment from these Centigors since they don't have armor piercing on them. But yeah, looking across the field, Morgor needs to get start chased. Um, not sure if the Jade Wizard sees him, but the Jade Wizard should be chasing Morgor. He has regeneration, and this might come back to haunt 
Soothsayer in the late game, not chasing off Morgor. If he gets some regeneration, that's going to be bad news bears. Over here, Carl diving and helping out the Empire Knights here with the Centigors. Great Swords diving in over here on top of the Gore Herd. And then meanwhile, we're having another blob in, uh, coming up over here. This time with the Sigmar Suns in the center of it. Knights of the Blazing Sun, the Warrior Priest. Up against some pretty serious uh, units from the Beast Moon. We've got the Butchers of Kalkengard over here. And yeah, there go the Knights of the Blazing Sun. And it's just a matter of time, I think, before you know the Sigmar Suns get taken out. But now we have Carl diving in. No fear. We're going to see Knights of the Blazing Sun as well as these Empire Knights. Um, coming around the side, Knights of the Blazing Sun doing a nice charge into this blob. Another flock of doom coming in here, but yeah, once Carl dived in there, Terror just started kicking in for a lot of units. The only units remaining are the Butchers of Kalkengard who cost Terror themselves, but they are really not having a good time in combat right now. Carl Franz excels at killing those beefy Minotaur units, um, but yeah, that just completely changed the pace of that engagement, and now we have Spearman diving in there too to help meet shield even further and Carl Franz turning around for another charge this time it looks like he may be going right on top of Morgor the shadow gave getting a very nice hit and another big hit going in there we got a chaos summon coming over trying to support but yeah at this stage it's looking pretty good for the Empire I would say um, got these grenade launchers still very good on ammunition I don't know what they're doing aha here they are coming in for some nice volleys into this big blob of gore herd. And oh my god, one volley is probably going to do so much damage. Oh god. Ah! It actually looks like it's hitting his great swords a bit more. <laughs> but still dishing out some good damage. And oh my god, those lightly armored gore herd just taking so much damage from those explosive rounds. Meanwhile, over here, though, looks like Carl Franz may have got himself into a precarious position, guys. He is surrounded by Chaos Spawn, who are unbreakable, and the Butchers of Kalkengard. And the nice thing about the Chaos Spawn is they will keep the leadership up very high for the Butchers, but in comes another big charge from the Knights of the Blazing Sun, who would then take another rear charge from the Centigors. Just a big old sandwich of units here. But now Empire Knights coming in for another charge, a rear charge coming in, and oh my goodness gracious, guys. I have to say, Soothsayer isn't looking too rusty to me. He's been playing this very, very well. I like this Empire Army a lot. And uh, it looks like he will be able to take this from Fly on the Bread. However, Fly on the Bread still has his caster. Still has got Morgor. Morgor stays alive. You never know what can happen. He's a tough son of a bitch after all. Coming out for a higher level view of the battle, though. It does look like the Beastmen are just running thin they don't have a lot of units left on the field army losses look like they may be about to kick in there goes the shatter and that will be a gg to taloxlin soothsayer and the empire taking out fly on the bed uh, fly on the bread uh and his beastmen no hangover can stop soothsayer uh energy energized yeah uh, you got him good ben the barman Yeah, Fly was playing very well as well. I mean, going up against Soothsayer, like, no matter how rusty he is, there's an intimidation factor. Everybody knows his name. So, yeah, great game to both players. I think Fly on the Bread played that very well. Um, but Soothsayer just refusing that left flank, because as we saw in the deployment, you know, you had Fly on the Bread coming in hot with a hard right flank. Uh, his units were vanguarded all on the right. And what does Soothsayer do? He refuses that flanks engagement, pulls all of his units to the hard right, and then starts just chewing through the beastmen on his right flank rather than worrying about defending his left flank. And that was just a really well played, nice decision. I think the decision of a very experienced tournament player who understands that, you know, no point defending it when your players, um, your opponent's going with an oblong tactic. You might as well just push your right flank as hard as possible and hope you can beat through his right flank before the enemy closes the gap onto yours. But beautiful game, some excellent kills on the cavalry here, and 87 on the grenade launchers. Like these guys got a ton of value on top of this light beastman infantry, and I think against beastmen it always makes sense to bring one unit of these guys just because. Even Bestigore Herd don't have the best armor, and grenade launchers just do really well against that light armored infantry. So, great game to both players. Let's go ahead and find another one, shall we?